Good morning. So in the previous lesson, the lecture video that I had uploaded, we have seen what is the need for software engineering, how software engineering tools and techniques are useful in developing modern software, which controls our world, and most of our activities. We have also seen how modern software can be efficiently built using software engineering techniques. We have also come across the term called software crisis, and we have also understood what are the main reasons for software crisis to happen. In today's class, we are going to learn what is professional software development. Most of us have written code. We have written code snippets with different objectives or purpose in mind. In today's class, we are going to differentiate the difference or we are going to bring about the difference between amateur software development and professionally written software code. So let's get started. So let's see why do we write programs. Different people have different objectives or purposes in mind when they code. Sometimes, especially considering various business organizations, they write, they have programmers in place to write programs or they use software products mainly to simplify their tasks. Consider your Excel sheet. What are the different features available on Excel? You can have a wide variety of numerical input, and then you can have inbuilt operations to perform calculations for you easily. You do not have to take the burden of manually performing calculations. So here, your Microsoft Excel uh, spreadsheet is one of the software written to simplify the user's task. Another reason why people write software or people use uh, software would be to process experimental data. Consider job, uh, the jobs of data scientists or engineers who have to deal with a lot of data. And most of the data generated in the environment may not be useful at all. So they may have to filter data to figure out or use only essential data. So here, they may use softwares to filter data based on certain criteria or conditions of interest. Data scientists may further use software to analyze or derive information for data from the data they have collected and then help in making valuable business strategies or decisions that will improve the quality of life of people using the software or the quality or the financial gains made by the business. There are people who write or code just for fun, as a hobby, to explore new programming skills, and for enjoyment. So these are called as hobbies. So these people write programs or code uh, just as a hobby project. Most of the time, hobbies write programs that are not used by another person. A hobbyist may write program only for his personal growth, his personal gain, his personal interest, or for just for an entertainment. But the vast majority of software development happens as a professional activity. So let's see what is professionally developed software or what is this professional activity of developing software. Most of the time, software is developed or professional software is developed with a particular business process in mind. So a client who has a business or a business strategy may come to a development organization and say, boss, this is what I want. I want a software to automate these things. I want a software with this objective in mind. So at that time, an, a development organization is going to code or write a software made for that particular business process or keeping that business client in mind. So this is one of the first reasons or first objectives for writing professional software. That is keeping a specific business process or client in mind. So now this client may come to you as a development organization uh, to build a software say to measure productivity of the business or to provide the software may, may be useful in providing insights to improve productivity and so on. For example, I may want to build a GUI, a graphical user interface, so that clients can easily access data which I have stored in a database can query the database, 
can add data, modify the database, can view results, which is uh, you know as part of performing operations. So this might be my requirement, and I may go to a development organization and ask them, give the specification, and ask them to develop a software for me. The examples for these uh, kinds of softwares could be accounting software, it could be customer relationship management software, it would be content management software, it could be product lifecycle management softwares, and so on. So all these softwares are not built because I like programming or I want to practice some coding skills or uh, something like that, but they are having a particular objective in mind and they have to be built professionally. The second objective of building software professionally is to include it in other devices. You may have seen or you may have been using a lot of household appliances, devices. Consider a microwave oven or a washing machine. So you have fuzzy logic built on a chip and that chip is embedded into your hardware de device, right? So that is nothing but software which will control the working of a hardware device. So you may build a software professionally so that in, it could be included in hardware devices. The software that you build also may be sold as a software product, for example, a CAD software. You have built a software professionally and you're selling this as a software product to the open market. Usually, when we develop software professionally, we do not develop it individually. So as an individual, if I have a keen interest towards programming, I may build a software, write some code, and you know explore new programming skills. But I am not going to sell that code as a, a kind of a software product to a client or a customer. But when we develop professional software in a development organization, Software developers usually work in teams. You have a team which talks to the client, gets their specification. You have a team in place which will understand this client requirements, make a design quickly as to what should be included in the software. You have a development team which will actually write the code and make things work, simultaneously coordinating and working with the testing team, which will test each module, which will test uh, different interfaces. You have a documentation team which will put the user manuals in place, which will put the system documentation in place and build a holistic product, which is easy to use, which is robust, which is flexible, and which is going to you know, keep the customer happy. So professionally developed software is almost always developed in teams and not by an individual. And the last attribute of professionally developed software is lifelong maintenance. That is, once you develop a software, once you go to the client, take his requirements, develop the code for it, it is not like you deploy the software or give the software to the client and that's the end of the story. No. Even after deployment, as a software engineering professional, you have to make sure that on field, once the product is deployed, there are no bugs, uh, there are no field effects. Uh, if there are upgrades that are to be needed, if there is a new technology out in the market, or if the customer comes back to you saying, boss, I need these to be added to the existing product you have already given me, then you should be in a position to add those increments to the already deployed software product without having to build the product again from scratch. You should be uh, able to provide patches and upgrades when it comes to security and so on. So this may not be the case when you are developing software or writing code just for fun. So this is one of the most important differences between professionally developed software and a software developed by an amateur.